Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina al-kareem. Muhammad ibn Abdillah sallallahu rabbi wa sallam wa alayhi. Amma ba'd. Ahabita fillah. Continue on with our study of Nawaqid al-Islam. We reach the fifth Nawaqid al-Naqid al-Khamis. Qala Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. من أبغض شيء مما جاء به نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولو عمل به كفر. شيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى said the fifth nullifier meaning the fifth thing which nullifies one's faith according to these ten nullifiers of iman or nullifiers of Islam. He said whoever despises something the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent with even if he practices it, has disbelieved. I want to mention a few things from one of our mashayikh, uh, from the explanation from Shaykh uh, Abdurrahman ibn Saleh Mahyadeen, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, uh, with regards to this naqid, before we continue on with our explanation, which is derived from several books uh, explaining this uh, very important treaties. The Sheikh mentioned, he said, Qutu al bogh huwa karahiya, o shedata karahiya, wa adam rida, wa yakun bi ko o fail wal itikad, ay ennuhu karahiya ta, ennuhu karahiya tu bil kalb, wal itikad, wa karahiya tu bil lisan, wa ko, wa kadalika karahiya tu. Sheikh uh, Mahyadeen said, Al-Bugd or hatred, uh, it means karahiya, to dislike something or to detest something, or severe, de severely detesting something. And the and not to be pleased with something. And this can be either with a statement, meaning on your tongue, or an action, or itikad, or with your belief. And that shows us also those are the components of what? Those are the components of iman. So all of those things comprise of iman. And that's why by violating this, you're violating iman. You're belittling iman, or you're totally nullifying iman if you are hating something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed or that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, affirmed you know that that was something that was halal or that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam something from his authentic sunnah that you detest that that you hate that then this is uh, disbelief this nullifies one's faith and of course there's details with that and we're going to talk about some of them some of the important ones and then he said, detesting and dislike is the opposite of muhabba, or love, warida, and pleasure, waqabul, and acceptance. So this is the opposite of accepting and love and being pleased with something. Wakarahiya wa bugd ma jaa bihi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min al abdi yudillu ala khubf. قلبه وفساده وظلمته ومرضه ولا خير فيه. He said, and the fact that someone hates or detests what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came with is evidence of their filthiness in the heart and the wickedness of the heart and the darkness of the heart and the sickness of the heart and that there is no good contained in it. And then he said, وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ مُصْطَفَى الْمُصْطَفَى صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٍ وَالصَّلَاحِ وَفَلَاحِ وَهُوَ الدِّينَ الْإِسْلَامُ وَهُوَ الْقُرْآنَ الْكَرِيمُ وَهُوَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ وَالسُنَّةُ الْمُطَاهَرَةُ أي 
كلام الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهم معصومان من الخطا والنسيان والضلال and he said the reason for this I mean the reason for the sickness and the uh, that this is a sickness of the heart of the servant who hates something or hates what the Prophet ﷺ came with, this is because what Mustafa, meaning the Prophet ﷺ, al-Mustafa, one of his names, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi, what he came with, all of it is good, and all of it is uh, rectifying, and all of it is success, and it is deen al-Islam, it is the religion of Islam, and it is the Qur'an al kareem and it is the speech of Allah and the sunnah, mutahara, the purified sunnah meaning the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah and the speech of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that they are both uh, perfect, free from any mistakes and free from uh, forgetfulness and free from misguidance so this is the sunnah and this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the deen of Islam. So when you detest something from the messenger, it means you detest something from Islam. So this is why it negates your faith. Because Islam, you believe in Islam or you don't believe in Islam. And having doubt about the sunnah of the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning something that is authentically, has been authenticated on the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, then this is kufr. May Allah protect us from kufr, from shirk, wazandaka, washak, and all of those things, and bid'ah, wa khurafat, ameen ya rabbil alameen. Then the shaykh said, wa qawlu shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala, shay'in, meaning uh, the shaykh said, and he mentioned shay'in, this is nakira, or this is uh, something which means that this is general, this is uh, very general, anything, meaning anything. So this is very general, means anything that the Prophet ﷺ came with. And he said, وَتَوْحِيدْ أَعْظَمْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ And Tawheed is the greatest thing from Islam. Then the rest of the branches of Iman, شُعْبَ iman, إِلَىٰ أَدْنَاهَا to the, to the smallest branch of Iman. Meaning Iman fluctuates and Iman and deeds have different levels. And the smallest level of Iman is removing a harm from the path, as the Prophet ﷺ said. So meaning, if you see just a thorn on the path or a piece of glass, and you remove it from where people are walking, that this is from Iman. If you do it for the sake of Allah, you will be rewarded. This is from Iman. This is from faith. And he said, وَيَشْمَلُوا كُلُّ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ نَبِي صَلَى and this includes everything that the Prophet وسلم, commanded, uh, or came with, or prohibited. Qala Ta'ala, وَمَا يُنْتِقُوا عَنَ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty says about the Prophet وسلم, that he did not speak from his desires. Verily, uh, what he came with or what what he was revealed to him uh, what 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 he spoke with is revelation that was revealed to him and so this ayah right here is what ahlus sunnah uses as evidence to say that the sunnah is wahi and this is how we differ with a lot of those with with certain sects that either belittle the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or negate the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in, entirely because of their ta'wil facet that they're using their intellect to belittle the sunnah or negate the sunnah of the Prophet for example there's a movement now uh, just to give us a quick example uh, a very secular secularist movement they say how can we even Bukhari and Muslim is not should, should not be left unscrutinized, meaning that they have to criticize Bukhari and Muslim and look for those things which do not go in accordance with their intellect. This is what they say. They say, hey, there's hadith that, in our view, belittle women. There's hadith that, in our view, uh, 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 talk about oppressing disbelievers and talking about this and talking about this. So they negate the sunnah 
based on their intellect, based on their hawa. And the Prophet ﷺ did not speak from hawa, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, verily it is revelation. So meaning, if it's revelation, then we follow it. This is the mindset and the creed and the itiqad of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. But Ahl Bid'ah wal Dalal and Kufr and Ilhad, they negate that. They say, no, 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 no. Our intellect is how we, uh, you know, understand, uh, understand the Quran and that if it goes against our intellect, then we throw it away. And especially regarding the Sunnah. And I'll give you another example. In my research, I've come across a particular professor who's a professor and considered uh, as an academic and a scholar in the West of Islam. A scholar in the West, they call him. This is what the non-Muslims call him. He's actually, uh, he is a Muslim and he's done a lot of scholarship and, and so forth. However, what is the natija of his, his Aqidah? And, and, and his, his scholarship, the natija is, that he says, some of the things he says, is he says, us modernists, or modernists, and he's referring to himself, cannot accept those hadith which contradict the intellect that, for example, and he gives an example, he said, for example, the scales on the day of judgment. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, in Surah Al-Zilzal, uh, that... Uh, huh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what? The scales. That whoever scales are light, then they will be uh, they will be punished and they'll be in the fire. And whoever scales are heavy with deeds. What does this affirm for us? For Ahl Sunnah, this affirms that there are scales. We believe in scales. We don't know how, we only know their description from what comes in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Quran and the Sunnah and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions that there is ijma on this. The ijma of the Salaf. And then there are many uh, athar of the Salaf would say, for example, I think it's in Aqidat al-Raziyain where uh, Imam al-Razi says, I uh, adraktu ulama al-Sham wa Yemen. You know, anyway, he mentions, I've met scholars from Sham, meaning like Syria and Jordan and, and Philistine, and from uh, Yemen and Iraq. He mentions all of these places that were in the Muslim world at that time, uh, that he met scholars from that, and they were all in agreement, meaning that is uh, consensus. They were all in agreement that there are scales, and there are scales, uh, that a scale exists, and it is a real scale on the Day of Judgment. We don't know the sifat of that rescale, of that, that scale. We just know it is a real scale. We believe in it. We believe that there's a scale and that it weighs our deeds, our good and bad deeds. Also, Sheikh Muhyiddin mentioned, mentions He said that the asl, the origin is, and al Abdul Mu'min, yajibu alayhi and yuhibbu kullu ma ja'a bihi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al Quran al Kareem wa Sunnah al Mutahra, wa la yakrahu, wa la yubghidu min dhalika shayin. So, and then he mentions other things, but for the sake of time, we won't read all the Arabic. We'll just give uh, uh, some of the benefits. So he said that it is uh, the origin is, the origin of what? The origin of Iman, the origin of, for the Mu'min. For the believer in Islam, is that uh, that it is an obligation upon him to love what the Messenger وسلم, came with from the Quran, Al Karim, and the purified Sunnah, and he and not to hate anything or detest anything from that. The Sheikh also mentioned with regards to uh, this naqid. He mentioned the hadith of Aisha, which is to show that deeds without iman, meaning that if you nullify, you fall into this nullifier faith, even if you practice it. Say, for example, you hate Salat. You hate it. In your heart, you really hate it. Not that it's... It, it, there's mashakta. There's difficulty in getting up praying Fajr, especially walking to the masjid, especially in the winter. And when it's cold and when it's raining, when you have to work... Uh, 
you know, at a certain time, or you're sick, or whatever the case may be. There's mushakka. That's a natural thing that you have, you, you find it difficult. That's natural. But, hating it is something else. Detesting it and say, man, I just hate a lot, but I'm going to make it anyway, because I want the people in the neighborhood kind of to see me. To see that I'm a, a person who prays. May Allah protect us from that. I mean, you know, Bilal, I mean. So that shows us that amal, that doing deeds without iman, la, la yanfa. It, is, it doesn't benefit us. It doesn't benefit us. Because that nullifies ikhlas. It nullifies ikhlas, because then it could be you're doing that for the pleasure of the people and shirk. An Aisha radiya Allah ta'ala anha qalat qultu ya Rasulullah Ibn Jud'an kana fi fi al-jahiliya yusilu rahim wa yut'imu al-miskin fa hal dhaka nafi'a nafi'uhu qala la yanfa'uhu innahu lam yakul yawman rabbag firli khatiyati yawm ad-din Aisha anha was speaking about uh, one of the pagans and she said, Oh Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibn, his name was Ibn Jud'an. May, I think he used to uh, give, you know, help the pilgrimage when they came to Mecca, the pilgrims come to Mecca giving them water and providing for them. Anyway, he did a lot of good deeds. As uh, Aisha said, Oh Messenger of Allah, uh, Ibn Jud'an, he used to, in the time of Jahiliyyah, you know, the pre-Islamic time, he used to keep the ties of kinship with his family, uh, and he used to feed the poor. Will this benefit him? The Prophet said, no, it won't benefit him. He says, because he never said even one day, my Lord, forgive me of my sins, on the day of judgment. So that means Ibn, uh, Ibn Jud Jud'an, he negated uh, uh, Tawheed. You know, he didn't he didn't uh, have Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. Uh, al he didn't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't even ask, make dua and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for this. But he did all of these good deeds. But the good deeds were like dust in the wind. They didn't benefit him. And this is very serious for us and a lesson for us to not be like the hypocrites by hating something from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, hating something from the Qur'an, meaning that if it's thabit, it's for sure from the Qur'an and the Sunnah that it is a practice which is something that we should practice, and you detest that, then, uh, then this nullifies your faith. But because you don't prefer, for example, the, the issue of, and we'll talk about that a little bit about polygamy. For example, if a woman hates polygamy because it's in the Quran, it's revealed in the Quran, and in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this is disbelief. But if she does not like that her husband take another wife because of her jealousy, because of this, then this is a natural thing. This is not detesting it from the deen. So, it's a very daqiq mas'ala and concept, but hopefully that's clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Ya iladhina amanu, Ya iladhina amanu, dkhulu fi silmi kafatan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 208, He says, O you who uh, believe, O you who believe, Allah addresses Ahlul Iman, the believers, enter into Islam fully, completely. So that means don't reserve, don't, hate something and leave off something from the deen, but do your best. Taqullah mustata'atu. Fear Allah as much as you can. Now that shows us that we're weak. We're not going to be able to fulfill everything. But there are certain things we have to fulfill. And we should not detest things from the religion. <coughs> Don't leave anything. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, لا يؤمن أهدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به. The Prophet ﷺ said, in a hadith, Akhraju ibn Abi Asim fi Sunnah, uh, what Imam al Albani says, uh, says it was weak. And you'll find this in uh, Arba'in al Nawawi, I believe, as well. But Imam al, uh, Imam al Albani says it's weak, and uh, he doesn't mention uh, what some of the other A'imma say, and I don't think the Shaykh would have mentioned it. 
for for this for other than that, it'd be with it being a weak hadith. So some of the uh, ulama of hadith obviously authenticate this hadith, and it is do not la yuminu ahlukum hatta yukun hawaho tabaan lima jetu bi. But the meaning is sahih. It definitely has a sound meaning, even if the ulama perhaps differ, differ over the authenticity of this hadith. And in this hadith, the the left is no, not one of you believes. Until what he, until his desires is in accordance with what I came with. And so this authenticates the hukum that we're talking about. That you have to love what the Prophet ﷺ came with and hating negates your iman. So doing deeds is a very important part of doing righteous deeds and iman and believing is the opposite of the characteristics of the disbelievers and of the munafiqun, the hypocrites. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets it known or is very clear subhanahu wa ta'ala about the sifat of the mu'mineen, the, the characteristics of the believers, of ahli iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Well uh Alladini Yuk Minuna Bilgay. Alladini Yuk Minuna Bilgaybi wa Yukimuna Salat wa Mimma Razakana Hum Yun Fikun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the believers, the people who are sa the Sadaqeen, the people who have the Iman, they believe in the Ghayb, they believe in the full message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they believe in the Kitabilah and the Sunnah Sunnah of the Message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they don't hate it, they love it, and they have Iman true Iman, they believe even though they've never seen inna ladina amanu inna ladina inna ladina oh, uh, inna bil ghayb f1 alladina yu'minuna bil ghayb those who believe in the unseen so we've never seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but we believe in him and we believe in his sunnah and the way we show we believe in his sunnah is through loving his sunnah and loving him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and practicing tatbiq and the amal. But the opposite of that is the hypocrites. And this naqid, min nawaqid al-Islam, uh, illustrates or one of the points uh, from this naqid that we can gain. And, and the naqid is whoever despises something the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was set with, even if he practices it, has disbelieved. The disbelievers who aren't going to practice the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, so they completely are out of this mas'ala, out of this issue. But the hypocrites may practice, but they don't, they don't believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the hypocrites, خاتم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى بصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله وباليوم الآخر ما هم بمؤمنين يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم عذاب عليم بما كانوا يكذبون وإذا قيل لهم لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا إنما نحن مصلهون ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم من سورة البقرة he says إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أن ذرتم أن لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون verily those who disbelieve regardless of whether you warned them or you didn't warn them لا يؤمنون so they didn't believe in their hearts. This is the characteristics of the, of the hypocrites. Those people who really may hate the message, of, uh, the message that Muhammad ﷺ came with, in their hearts they hate it. And they, but they may practice it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَاتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ And Allah has sealed their hearts and their hearing, and their sight. And for them is a severe torment. Oh Allah, protect us from being the munafikeen and bless us to die on Iman. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They're very Allah says, then there's some people, women and nas, that say we believe in Allah and the day of judgment. And they're not believers. May Allah protect us from that. That hypocrisy that can come to us. That can come to us. And this is a type of hypocrisy. Even if we disbelieve in one thing that Muhammad was sent with. So my advice to myself, as I was thinking about this, I just came from the prayer, and I was thinking about this before Salat and after Salat. Thinking about the scariness of hypocrisy. And do I have hypocrisy with regards to some issues in the deen? What is the deal that you don't is if you think like this and you fight it. You fight something that you may not have accepted before, but you strive your best to fear Allah as much as you can, practice as much as you can, and love it as much as you can. The loving is a natural thing. This is a part of Iman. But you're striving towards that. So this is the opposite character of the hypocr hypocrites. Because the hypocrites, they do it outwardly, but inwardly they detest it. They may hate it. وَعِيَادٌ بِاللَّهِ And may Allah protect us from being of them. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So from the people are those who say, We believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. And they're not, but they're not mu'mins. They're not believers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They deceive. They try to deceive Allah. Because you can't deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who believe. And they only deceive themselves. And they don't even know. SubhanAllah, the hypocrites are not even aware. They're not even aware. They're, they're, they're not even aware of this and they don't feel this. That they've not deceived Allah. And they haven't even deceived the mu'mineen. But they only deceive themselves. They're deluded, thinking they deceive the people. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fi qulubihim marad in their hearts is sickness may Allah cure our hearts amin ya rabbal alamin fi qulubihim marad fa zadhum Allah marad they have sickness and Allah increases their sickness not out of injustice he is al adl he's the most just subhanahu wa ta'ala and he loves justice so this shows that they have a sickness and it's because of their shortcomings in iman and their hatred for the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam not believing and what Muhammad came with. And for them is a painful torment for what they used to deny. May Allah protect us from denying anything from the message of Islam. Amin. And if you say to them, do not cause fitna or facade in the earth, they say, verily we are the ones who rectify. This is what the hypocrites say. And subhanAllah, even many Ahlul Bid'ah, without saying they're hypocrites, even though they have so many, so much wickedness, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, ISIS, or Daesh, these people have so much wickedness and hypocrisy because they're hip hypocritical with the Nasuls. They pick and choose and only slay and spread blood and wickedness, and they say that they're the Muslim. Subhanallah, they fit that description. <laughs> we say, don't cause wickedness in the land. O oh, Al Qaeda, don't do this wicked evilness. O oh, Shabab, stop killing. Allow, allow for your country to have peace and stability. We say, O oh, Boko Haram, you're putting, you're sending women into the marketplace in in surrounding countries and in and all over Nigeria, blowing up the people. We say, don't spread wickedness in the land. Come to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Come to true Islam. Don't cause wickedness in the land and spread this in the name of Islam, your wickedness. And then you claim, They say that we are the ones who rectify. But instead they spread facade through the earth. 
من من هؤلاء ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون Verily they're the مفسدون they're the ones who spread wickedness Allah said it Subhanallah isn't that powerful that's a powerful ayah ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون they verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إنما قال سبحانه ألا إنهم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes tawqeet here he says verily they are the wicked ones. They're the ones who spread wickedness in the land. However, they, they're unaware of that. SubhanAllah. So these are wicked traits we want to avoid at all costs. A, be away from the traits of the hip, hypocrites. Those who claim and even practice the sunnah. And even practice aspects of Islam. Or in front of the Muslims. However, in their hearts, fi qulubihim marad. And in their hearts is wickedness. And in fact, they really detest Islam or they detest something from Islam or part of Islam some issues that we need to highlight before we end this uh, uh, talking about this nullifier first the person who despises anything from the Sharia falls into this category and has disbelieved for example the one who dislikes the prayer and believes it to be difficult and impractical has left Islam even if they pray this, the, now again this is the one who detests the prayer dislikes the prayer not the one who just finds some difficulty and some mashakta for getting up for fajr no uh, this does not include the person who may find it difficult for instance to wake up for the fajr prayer or make ablution in cold weather with cold water or sacrifice fi sabilillah to spin in the cause of Allah to do talib al-ilm in the cause of Allah or to fight in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're human beings we have fear we have natural fear to the iya but overcoming that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not detesting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated is the point uh, and what we want to avoid. However, if, it, if this individual dislikes the prayer or hates to make ablution, then he has fallen into disbelief. Another example is the woman who detests pig polygamy. She detests it, completely hates it. So whoever hates this Sharia ruling polygamy has disbelieved. Therefore, it is imperative that women be made to understand that they should not abhor polygamy because this is the ruling of Allah and His Messenger However, if a woman dislikes this ruling due to natural jealousy, she doesn't want to share her husband. She loves her husband. She likes to be with him. She doesn't want him to go one night here and one night there. She wants him to be with him. Natural jealousy. And she does not dislike the Sharia ruling then there is no harm in this. Because this is natural, it's tabi'i. This is her natural state. And this is the statement of uh, Imam Fulzan, I believe. Uh, or due to the fact that some men are not just. So she dislikes that an unjust individual practices polygamy. Because she fears he will not be just. Then there is no problem with that. The reason a person becomes a disbeliever, if they hate Sharia ruling, is because they have negated one of the foundations of Iman. Uh, which is loving Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he was sent with. Also, this is the negation of the principle of loving and hating for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Al-Wala wal bara Loving for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is an obligation and it entails loving the believers for their Iman, assisting and advising and supporting them, being merciful with them and anything that relates to the rights of the believers. Allah says in his description of the companions of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam those who are with him are severe against the disbelievers and merciful amongst themselves. In Surah Al-Fatih, uh, verse 29. This is an example of the Salaf. This is the example of the Salaf. Those who preceded us in the righteousness and in, in Taqwa. It is an obligation to love all Muslims everywhere during any time regardless of race, strictly for their faithfulness and obedience to Allah, the Almighty. Allah, the Almighty says, the believing men and the believing women are... Uh, our protectors, supporters of one another. And this is in Surah al Toba, verse 71. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Verily your protector is Allah, his messenger, and the believers, those who perform the salat, give alms, and they are from those who prostrate in obedience to Allah. Whoever takes Allah, his messenger, and those who believe his protectors, then the party of Allah will be victorious. So this illustrates the love that the Ahli Iman has for one another. And that love is a part of our faith and loving Iman and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and not detesting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
loves, meaning Ahl Iman, and uh, anything from Islam. And that is the point of uh, uh, mentioning this wala uh, with regards to this nullifier of Iman. So therefore, as Imam Ibn Muhammad Ibn Wahhab said, whoever despises something the Messenger وسلم, was sent with, even if he practices it, has disbelieved. So be careful, Ahabatifillah, of despising that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, and that which the Prophet والسلام, came with, and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the Shaitan. And may Allah bless us with a class with a bat. And may Allah bless us to love what He loves and detest what He detests. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to strive in His cause for His sake in a manner that pleases him and may Allah bless us to love everything the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam came with and be true sincere believers in Iman. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.